In this section, we will learn about reporting with Puppet DB and Puppet Monitoring. We will first understand the different Puppet DB API endpoints and look at how we can query Puppet DB and create customized reports. We will then use Puppet to create a customized dashboard using Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. And then we will use a Logstash reporter module to send Puppet reports to our new dashboard. Next, we will learn about the different Nagios types available in Puppet and then we will create an extensive module to configure a dynamic Nagios monitoring system with Nagios server and clients. Finally, we will look at how to monitor Puppet agent run using Nagios in our infrastructure. In this video, we will learn about creating Puppet reports from PuppetDB. We will first understand the various endpoints of PuppetDB and how to access it and make queries to get our data. We will then create a basic Ruby script and add some logic to it to connect to the PuppetDB endpoints and get the required data. Next, we will add some more logic to the script to get some specific data that we need and then create a formatted output file from that data. Finally, we will add logic to the script to also create our HTML file so that the fetched data can be viewed in a tabular format. Let us have a look at the PuppetDB documentation. We are using PuppetDB version 4.4 in our infrastructure. Under the topic Query API version 4, we can find an extensive list of the numerous API endpoints available in PuppetDB. Various topics about how to upgrade from earlier versions, getting familiar with the query structure, and then the actual endpoint documentation are all covered. To make sure that you are able to extract the maximum out of PuppetDB, it is essential that the documentation be covered extensively. We will now look at the query structure in details. The basic thing that we need to keep in mind is that we need to make requests to the PuppetDB server and the port. The API URL then includes the words PDB and then query and after that we need to mention the API version which in our case will be v4. Finally, we need to mention the actual endpoint that is facts, reports, resources, catalogs, events, environments and many more. If no query parameters are mentioned in the request, then the response includes all records available for the endpoint. To learn about including queries in the request, we need to follow the query tutorial in the documentation. Basic query is as simple as three fields in an array, the first of which is the relational operator followed by the attribute name and finally the value of the attribute. The documentation also provides more complex scenarios which includes conditionals and multiple matches. We will now start with running some simple queries in our PuppetDB node. We will query the reports endpoint and look for possible data. We will first make a simple curl request to the reports endpoint. As we can see that the huge JSON output is not very helpful, we will run the command again and then we will pipe the output to the JQ tool which is the JSON formatter for the Linux shell. And this time we can see we have a much more formatted output than the previous one. In our next request, we will add a query to search for records where the cert name attribute is app-prod-001.local and then redirect the output to the JQ tool. And there we have all the records for the app-prod-001.local node. To make sure that we have different reports for the same node, we will run the same query again and use the JQ tool to get the receive underscore time at attribute of the records. And there we can see we have the different receive times of the reports. We will now create a Ruby script which will help us to perform similar tasks like the curl requests, but this time we will try to format the data as much as possible and extract some meaningful data for a potential report. We will now create a script called puppet underscore report dot rb and we will add some Ruby code. In this basic script, we have first included the required modules. Next, we have stored the reports endpoint in a variable and used the URI module to pass the endpoint. We have then used the net HTTP module to send a request to PuppetDB and stored the result in the PuppetDB underscore reports variable. Next, we have passed the response using the JSON module 
because the puppet db response is in json format finally we have printed the json response to the standard output we will now save this file and we will run this script to see the results and there we can see we have the same json output that we had in the curl request we will now modify the script to add some new logic we will remove the existing code and we will add some new code we have now added a query to the request which finds records for the nodes which end with dot local we have then iterated through the json output and found the total number of resources for the node from the json we have then stored the node name the report receive time the status of the puppet run and the total number of resources in a comma separated format in the puppet underscore data variable and printed the result to the standard output for all the nodes available we will now save this file and we will run the script again and there we can see that we have an output which is much more formatted and meaningful it gives us the specific data that we had requested we will now modify the script one final time and add some new logic we have opened couple of new file handles for the files puppet underscore report dot csv and puppet underscore report dot html we have written some identifying headers for the different columns that we are creating for our report for both the files our objective is to store the data in the csv file in a comma separated manner and also in the html file by using html tables inside the iteration we have written the data to both the files but in different data formats finally we have closed the file handles we will now save this file and we will run the script again and this time we should be able to see two new files called puppet underscore report dot csv and dot html we will first check the content of the csv file and then we will check the content of the html file here we can see that we were able to create the files in the exact format that we wanted the csv file can be used as a data source for use in any other application and the html file can be used for visualizing in a web browser if we have a working nginx running on a puppet db node and if we copy the puppet report.html file to the document root of the nginx application we will be able to see the report in our web browser we will now try to open the report file in our web browser and there we can see that although not very elegant we have a working report of our data extracted from puppet db similarly we can create a lot more customized reports for our puppet infrastructure with data from puppet db for the purpose of this example we have created a static html file from the script however in a large infrastructure with thousands of nodes this is not a practical solution in such cases the data can be stored in databases or in formatted files and then with some web development knowledge the data can be visualized in an elegant manner.